Hi everyone. I want to help you with trinomial factoring. Factoring is, is such an important skill in mathematics, but it's not one that comes easily. It's not obvious to a lot of people. However, it's not even all that hard of a concept. It's, it's kind of like, it's, honestly, it's kind of like learning, let's say, learning to drive a, a standard, okay? Uh, it takes a while, it takes a lot of practice, but once you get it, you get it. You just get comfortable with it, it becomes natural to you. Trinomial factoring is a lot like that, okay? Takes a little bit of getting used to. You gotta kinda get over that hump, and then once you're there, you're, you're good. Now, to start off with, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take a couple of binomials, we're gonna multiply them together, because I'll show you here what we mean. This is what a, a trinomial would look like in factored form. This is the, our goal here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this, we're gonna expand this out, get an answer, and then I'm going to show you how we get back to this, okay? So now, first of all, I'm going to expand this out. And remember how that works here. We take both terms from this first binomial, and they get distributed to both terms in this second bi binomial here. It's just a distribution. So 3x will get multiplied by 2x plus 5. And then the negative 2 will also get multiplied by 2x plus 5. 3x gets distributed to those terms, and we get 6x squared plus 15x when I distribute the 3x to those two. Negative 2 then gets distributed to these two terms. We get negative 4x and then minus 10. Now, what causes the problems when we start factoring is that I now am going to put these two terms together. I'm going to combine them. So 6x squared well, positive 15 and negative 4 is going to get me 11x with a negative 10 at the back there. And if the fact that those two get combined together, that's what causes some of the difficulty here because it's kind of difficult to undo that, that little bit of addition there, the adding of the negatives there, okay? So now we're going to take a look at how to go backwards from here and take us right back to the beginning here. And there are several methods that can be used to do this. So now I'm going to show you how to factor this expression here. We're going to go backwards to the original two binomials, but this time we're going to use guessing and checking. And I know that doesn't sound uh, really all that strategic here. However, guessing and checking can be an extremely efficient method of factoring. So I already know that this is going to have two binomials multiplied together to get me 6x squared uh, plus 11x minus 10 here. Now, here's what we're going to do. 6x squared could be broken down. Now, these two terms right here are going to have a product of 6x squared. 6x, sorry, 6 can be broken down to either 2 times 3 or 6 times 1. I don't know what it's supposed to be here, but let's guess right now the most common one, 2x times 3x, okay? Now, the last term right here, negative 10, Okay, that can be broken down into either 2 times 5 or 10 times 1. Okay, now I want to, I, I, I already know where this is going to go here because I can, I can see this uh, a couple steps ahead here. So let me just take, a, take you through a kind of a, a direction here that's not going to lead you directly to the answer just to illustrate the procedure here. Let's say that you took negative 10 and you're going to break it down into 10 and 1. Okay, now because the, the, the term here is negative, one of those two is going to be negative. Either the 10 or the 1. Just one of them. The other one's going to be positive. That's the only way the product can be negative. Notice that this interior sum here is positive. What that tells me is when I split this up into a positive and a negative factor here, the larger, the larger factor has got to be the positive one. Now, I'm going to plug 10 and 1 into here. So I'm going to plug 10 and 1 here. But before I even do this, before I even check to see if I've done this correctly, I've done it incorrectly. And I'll explain why. As soon as I put the 10 here, I have inadvertently introduced a common factor of 2 in just this binomial. Which means I should be able to then factor a 2 out of this if this is correct. But if I can factor a 2 out of here, then that implies that I should have been able to take a 2 out of here. But there's quite clearly, there quite clearly isn't a factor of 2 common to those three terms. I can't put the 10 there. That, as a guess, 
makes no sense. The only reasonable guess is to make this one in 10. Okay, because now there's no common factor in either case here. Now, let's multiply these out. When I multiply 2x by 10, I'm getting the 20. When I'm multiplying the 1 by the 3, I'm getting the 3. I need the larger factor to be the positive one, so this would be positive, this would be negative. Now let's see what we get here. 2 times 10 is going to be 20. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Put those together. I should be getting the 11 in the middle here, but I'm not. 20 minus 3 is going to be get me 17, not 11. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm, I'm guessing and then expanding really quickly to see if I'm going back to the original expression. In this case, I don't. So 10 can't be broken up into 1 and 10, and I, I knew that. It needs to be broken up into 2 and 5, okay? Now, I could guess 2 and 5, but again, that's a bad guess. I shouldn't have even tried that because once again, I'm putting a common factor of 2 there. And we've already expressed the factor, we've already gone over the fact that that's not possible to have a common factor here if it's not also common here. So that doesn't even make sense as a guess. The only way I can guess that, that group of numbers is to, to do it like this, 5 and 2. Now, 2 times 2 is 4. 5 times 3 is going to be 15. I've already established earlier on, because this is negative and this is positive, that between those two multiples here, the larger one has to be the positive one. So that means the 5 here has to be the positive, and then back here, this has to be the negative. Now let's just double check that that actually worked. So 2x times negative 2, there's my negative 4x. 5 times 3x is going to be positive 15x. And yeah, when you add those together, you will get positive 11x. And so there we go. There's the answer that I'm looking for. And when you compare that to where we started, we've gone right back to the original. Okay? So good. So guess and check uh, can actually work quite, quite well. And it can be a very efficient method uh, the, more comfort, the more comfortable you are with it. Um, it takes practice. But one of the benefits of this or this method here as, as a, your choice of method is that you should know that when you're getting these questions in, in high school, the numbers that you're going to be working with here and here aren't going to be crazy big numbers. They're going to be under control. They're going to be relatively small like these guys right here, which means you're not going to end up with that many choices. And even when you start guessing, I've already shown you how you can eliminate some obvious choices that don't make any sense. So you can actually narrow this down so that you're only having to, to check, you know, a, a small handful of options. This can be a very, very efficient method of factoring.